Great. Let's see. Let's do some super chat. You meant uh, the German population had to be nihilistic on a never before seen level where they were willing to systematically exterminate other members of our species. Are people in the West today on the road to being consumed with that much hate and rage? I mean, it's possible, but remember that, and, and this is the thing, Jordan Peterson talks about this, but it's true in the case of Germany, that it wasn't that, if you walked around Germany uh, five years before the rise of Hitler, you would say, oh yeah, these people are hating and raging. It's, it, and so therefore Hitler makes sense. That, it's not how these things work. If you, un, if you, one of the things that Leonard Peikoff in Ominous Parallels uh, talks about, and you need to read that book, if you're interested at all at any of these issues, is how ideas lead people to be willing to exterminate millions of fellow human beings. And part of it is they're trained in the ethics of duty. So it's not that millions of Germans raged and hated and despised, but millions of Germans were willing to follow orders. Millions of Germans were willing to do whatever the philosopher king the, 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 the spiritual leader of the Aryan people told them to do. Whatever they believe the categorical imperatives or their duties obliged them to do. That is what they were willing to do. So it's not that everybody who pulled the trigger or every god that ushered the Jews into the gas chambers or any one of them who scooted out the bodies and put them in a furnace it's not that every one of those people was an nihilist, hated and raged, but that every one of those people were willing to follow duty, to do what they were told, to not question, to assume the authorities were authorities. Think about it. it, it take this example. Hopefully this would clarify. And this is my counter to another Jordan Peterson point. Take Abraham and Jacob. God comes to Abraham and says, I want you to sacrifice your oldest son to me. I want you to kill him. And Abraham says, yes. Is Abraham willing to sacrifice his oldest son because he's a nihilist? because he hates, because he rages. No, Abraham is willing to sacrifice his oldest son because he follows orders, because he's a uh, thoughtless, because he's a follower of commandments. So, that's a duty ethics. That's what people are trained to do by a German philosophy come the 1930s and 40s. They're prepped. And the burst in the 1930s in a sense of just subjectivism and, and, and rejection of all absolute truths just sets up triggers that in the culture, which is said, no, 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 no. That leads to mayhem and nihilism and, and destruction and uh, anarchy and all that. No, what we really need to do is just follow orders. And they do. And it's always nutty when you think about it, because they go from nihilism and uh, nihilism in the sense of riding in the streets and and, and crazy modern art and, and uh, so-called art and uh, uh, democracy gone amok and all of this stuff too, suddenly all these, including all the leftists, you know, are ready to follow orders. So it's, it, it's stunning how quickly a transition happens. And one of the things I saw in 2020, 
I think, was that epistemology. That abandonment of reason, abandonment of facts in the name of following orders. And that's what I think is scary. And that's why I think it's not so much that what you see out there is rage and people. It's, are you seeing a, a mentality change in America where Americans would be willing to just accept orders rather than think for themselves, don't tread on me, real freedom and real liberty. And I worry that we're there. I worry that the West is moving in that direction. Um, but I don't, I don't know that you could have seen it coming before Hitler in Germany. And I don't know you're going to see it coming here in the United States. I mean, in a sense, we're seeing it right now. But will you literally see it coming? Will you be able to predict the exact date of it? No, you'll just you'll see the trend. And that's why I always say the fascism is a backlash against kind of the leftist nihilist disintegration, which then demands order. And the order can lead to great violence in the name of that order, in the name of, of, of getting things right, in the name of what? In the name of duty. In the name of duty. I mean, some of the, some of the worst of the Nazis in the, in the, um, when they were on trial, I mean, made the claim I was just following orders. And I believe some of them. They were just following orders. So what do you make of the corporals who were pulling the triggers? They were also just following orders. But it's the idea that you're willing to just follow orders. That's what's scary. And that's not necessarily nihilism in you. It's, a, it's, a unthinking, it's an unbelievable irrationality and immorality in you. But I, I don't know that it's nihilism in you. Okay, one more from Michael, because he put a lot of money behind these. Um, I've, noticed, I've noticed politically right-wing pro-capitalist intellectuals hold Kantian epistemology. How did their Kantian ethics and epistemology lead to a pro-capitalist political orientation like that of Jordan Peterson, who is clearly a Kantian? This relates to the question I think I answered last show, maybe from you, Michael, I don't know, um, about the culture. The fact that there's a, a Kantian culture out there, and yet we're not all dead, right? We're not all finished. Right? So what's holding us together? And I said, there's a battle going on between the Kantian intellectuals, a certain percentage of our population that's Kantian, and certain elements in the culture that are pro-reality, pro-production, pro-happiness. And that that battle is ongoing, the Enlightenment versus Kant. Think of it also that that battle is going inside the mind, the soul of somebody like Jordan Peterson. See, yes, Jordan Peterson is this weird combination of religion and Kant and bizarre philosophy and a little bit of a duty ethic mentality. But he also has elements of pro-freedom, pro-capitalism elements, not they're certainly not pure, uh, pro-personal responsibility in a healthy sense. Some of it's unhealthy, but some of it's healthy. Be because he's got remnants of the Enlightenment. He talks about the Enlightenment. He's quite good when he talks about the Enlightenment, when he talks about the individualism of the Enlightenment. So in people's souls, in people's minds, there is a battle going on between the self-destructive, anti-reason, anti-reality, intellectual remnant that they have gotten from the universities, they've gotten from the intellectuals, maybe they got directly from Kant and others, on the one hand, and a pro-reality, wanting to live, desire to live, having a mind that can see what works and what doesn't work, and saying, you know, capitalism works, socialism doesn't, so I'm against socialism. But you can see how he, he has to undercut the capitalism because he can't completely trust that. 
So if you saw his debate with Zizek, the socialist communist, he doesn't really want to defend capitalism. He wants to attack socialism. So, yeah, he's battling, you know, and his intellectual influences versus kind of the common sense, the, 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 the reality orientation that is part of who he is, the part of what he is, part of having to deal with the world. Nobody can be, not even Kant, a pure Kantian. Nobody can be completely, nobody can really live if they assume they have no knowledge of reality itself as it is. So life is impossible. So they have to embrace certain aspects of the enlightenment, certain aspects of living in order to survive. And then it's a battle inside them, a clash. Who's going to win out? OK. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>